In the spirit of fall and changing season, we're going to be making a bouquet macabre. In other words, some stylized dying flowers in a vase. We will use the season slider for this, so it's going to be very fun. But I should mention this is not an animation that you can export per se directly from the modeler, but you could be swapping models in real time or in your pre-rendered visualization. It's a great way to work because you only need one scene to have all those stages of decay. So let's start this. The first thing we need here is a vase. To import the vase in your scene, just go into the mesh window, select your asset, then you can import your material, assign the asset to it, and drop a mesh generator inside of your scene. Then we can start building our bouquet. So we want the flowers to be growing out of the vase, right? So for this, we're going to be using a zone. Just add a zone into your scene, then place it in the center of your vase and we can use the sync value to make sure it's not sticking out of the bottom of the vase. Then adjusting the radius of the zone, make sure it fits the radius of the vase. Then we can start adding flowers out of that. So first I'm adding a trunk tube. If you watch other of my tutorials, you know that I love my branch tube. I think if you're learning speed tree, it's a great way to start because there are no deformation assigned to it. So you really know what you're doing. If you're used to speed tree, then go ahead with the preset. They're super useful and you'll save time. I'm going to assign a material to it. So you see, it's super simple. I just use a base color and a height map. Maybe I was a bit lazy for this, but Right now I didn't need any more maps, so that's fine. One thing that is really fun is that we're going to use the height map to create some displacement on that trunk. So if I just assign the materials, here you see it's on the cylinder, and then I could go into the displacement panel, change the source of the noise for material, and increase the displacement value. So you see here we have those nice vertical patterns appearing on the silhouette. I think the details are a bit too small, so I'll change the UV to make it bigger. That's more fitting for a stem. And then I want to have more detail in the silhouette, so if I go into script mode, I can see the wireframe and then increase the segment's value for the length and also the radial number. So that way we can have a really nice defined silhouette. Then I can go back into standard. The next thing I'm going to add is a little tip on the top of my branch tube. And this will be the petal section of the flower. Now you could add your petals directly on top of your main branch if you wanted. It will work just as well. But I think it's better to keep the parts separate. It's easier to iterate if you need to change something if you have different parts. So for that, I'm just adding an extension and then changing a bit the radius. And from there, we can add a leaf node on top of the tip and these will be for our petals. So if I show you the petal material, you see they're very simple. So this is just a simple drawing for the base color. For the normal map, I use the opacity map, applied a smooth blur to it, and then use that as a height map that I converted back to a normal map. So it's going to help to create a nice light rim on the side of the cutout. I forgot to record how to create a cutout on my first run, so jump in time. Okay, so to add a cutout, it's super simple. When you're in your material window, go into the cutout panel click on the edit next to the cutout and then you'll see the cutout editor window appear. From there, you can choose one of the generate options to place your base points for your cutout and then use the tessellation amount to add some subdivision into that. So from there, you could choose to uh, change your, your base point, change the orientation, it's pretty intuitive and when you're done, you can just assign that to your cutout and you're done. 
Now you see that on the petal, I have a very strong gradient. That's because of my ambient occlusion map now. It's a bit much, maybe <laughs> too much. I really wanted to have a dramatic effect for this model. But if you're going to export that, maybe don't do it this way because it's, it, it's too much, <laughs> to be honest. So now we can start orienting our petals. So making sure they're looking towards the sky and then changing the alt values to change the angle of the petals. I am taking the Philotaxi generation style with world so that they wrap all around the stem. And then you see I changed my ambient occlusion because it was too much, like I said. And then adding some more petals because I want the flower to be pretty full. And changing the size of the top petals to be smaller. So for this section, um, I would recommend looking at some reference pictures. It's going to really help you decide what kind of the tape formation you want to see on your petals. And if you want even further details on your... Well, it could be your petals or your leaves or whatever you decide to create inside the speech tree. You can use a height map to change the silhouette a bit. So see here, it's just very simple texture. So white circles on a gray background. And I'll use that to add even further deformation on my petals. So if I just increase the height value, you see it's taking that, that sweet height and formation to add some really nice details on those petals. I think it's, cre it's creating a more interesting silhouette for that. Now we can start adding more flowers because one is okay, but I want a full bouquet. So I'm just increasing the value of the absolute number, then changing the boundaries so that they move towards the end of the zone underneath. And I'm using the out value into the parent curl section to make them stick out on the side of the vase. Now you see that there is some clipping happening and to fix that, I'll just change the blue curve on the stem next to the out value, so here. So this way, I make sure that this deformation only happens to a certain, se certain section of the branch. So it's curling out, but only on the upper part of the branch. Now you can see here that there's something wrong with the light. I tried to blame that on the light source before, but <laughs> it was really my mistake. That's because I turned my petals upside down so the normals are facing the wrong way. There are two ways you can fix that. So here, in a little later in the video, I'm going to just switch the rotation of my petals. I think I do it right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here it's looking much, much better. But if that happens to, to you, there's another way you can change it. You can go into the lighting options and change the orientation of the normals from there. If you would like to learn more about the lighting properties, we have a dedicated tutorial for that. So just take a look at our YouTube channel. Right now we can see the repetition in this flower because we have only one material assigned for the petals. So we want to change that. I created some variants of the petal. So I'm going into the material panel of the petals and then adding some new materials. So I'll just add that. Uh, I have a pretty long list of material for that model. I made five variations. Three of them are mostly red and two others have just this blue highlight in the middle. So what I want to do with them is create a nice gradient through the parent branch. So I want the red ones to be mostly at the bottom of the flower and the one with the highlights to be at the top. So I'm using the parent curve for that. I'm using an exponential curve. <laughs> an exponential uh, increasing curve for the highlight one and decreasing for the red. So that, that way we have a nice effect going on in the flower. 
The next step will be to add some filaments and enter. So you know those wig little wiggly branches that stick out in the middle of the flower? That's what we want to create here. So for this, I'll use once again the famous branch tube and I'll make sure that it's at the tip of the branch and then quite decreasing the start angle because I want them to be sticking out of the flower. And I'll change the generation style to interval and increasing the frequency quite a lot because I want a lot of them. Adding some spiral and then changing the start angle with a parent curve to have a gradation of start angle. And we can refine a little bit the branches to make them smaller, shorter, using the parent curl values to add some nice bending in those branches. And then we can change the material. So I don't want to have the same material as a stem. For this one, we have a material that's simply a linear gradient. So by default, you see that the pattern is repeating quite a bit. We don't want this kind of tiling. To change it, go into the UV channel and you can change the V value of the UVs to absolute. Remove the offset because we want a value of zero to run for the UVs for all the branches. And there you see we have the nice, nice gradient happening on those filaments. Making some final adjustments here. Well, they're never really final, aren't they? <laughs> Always come back to it. Okay, so next it will be the enter. So I'm going to add a little larger section at the tip of the filaments. For this, I'll be using a tube again. Yay! <laughs> and changing the generation style to absolute because I want only one at the tip of the parent branch. I'm not using an extension to do that because I want to have con total control over the radius. When you're using an extension, you're constrained to the radius of the parent underneath and for this we don't want it. So if I go into the skin and change the radius, you see, I can have a very big gap between my current branch and the one, the parent underneath. So that's what we want for this. For the UVs, I'm simply copy pasting the UV settings from the filament to the enders. So that way we don't have to do it again. But for this one, I would like to have mostly the, the white portion of the texture. So to do so, I'm decreasing the scale and using the offset until I only have the top portion of the gradient apparent on my branch. Then changing the radius curve to round to have an elongated sphere. We can make them a little shorter. And then we see we have a little gap happening between the, the parent and the child. So I'm using the sink to make them appear closer to the filament. Adding some segments to have a smoother silhouette. and make a few modifications before moving on to the next section. I don't like the way this stem is looking, so I'm just adding a little increase in the radius right before the petal start. I think it's going to look nicer. Now let's add some spiky spikes because it's Halloween, so it's fitting. For this, I'm using tubes again and then adding some variants, spiral, Yada yada yada, all the same things again. I'll be using the radius and also the welding options to create really a smooth transition between the spike and the branch underneath. And then for the UVs, it's the same trick as we did for the, the filaments and the enters. So just cutting the gradient, making sure we have a zero to one UV section for all of those little spikes. The last thing we're missing from these flowers are the leaves. So I'm adding a leaf generator and then using pretty much the same properties as before. So once you have a way of doing things, you'll see you'll be coming back to the same properties over and over again, and you'll become much faster at creating your model, which is great. So I'm making sure there are no leaves in the middle of the phase and also 
making the top leaves smaller and then using the height map again to add some nice details in the shape of the leaves. It's a really nice way to quickly add some, some interesting details and also they're very easy to iterate so you can always come back to your texture and paint some little white or black section if you want to have more of curves around your, your leaves. So it's a, it's a really great tool. I couldn't help myself, so I'm doing a few last modifications before moving on to the material season, so the decaying effect. I'm just changing the petals, and then I saw that there were some clipping happenings between the middle section of the flower and the petals, so I changed that because clipping is d never looks great. Like, <laughs> we should avoid that. Now we are ready to enter the heart of the subject, the season change! Hooray! So if we look at the petal materials, for example, each petal has two variants. One that is for spring and summer, that is mostly red. Let me just show it to you here. And the same one, but with some brown parts and also when I desaturated the colors. It's pretty simple, but it's going to be quite effective. So we don't really need more than that. And each material has a season curve assigned to it. So if I make that bigger, you see each section of the graph corresponds to a different season. So you have spring, then summer, fall and winter. And when you slide through this slider, um, you will see the texture change depending on that curve. So when the curve is at the bottom, the texture is hidden. When it's at the top, the texture is shown. So that's how we switch between one texture to another. The next thing we're going to do is to combine those petals together in material set. So for each petal, I have two versions, like I told you, and I want those petals to be associated together so they're not flickering all over the place. So for the five variant, I have five different sets containing both the summer and the fall one. And now if we take a look at the graph for these, you'll see that I never let the curve go to zero. They are always a little bit above the line. And that way you make sure that each textures are going to stick together. If it went all the way to zero, um, the, the way it works is that for the petal, it would just pick in the bag of textures. So you could have some flickering happening while you're, <laughs> you're sliding the season slider. I hope that makes sense. Maybe it seems a little abstract right now, but, but once you start playing with it, you're going to see what I mean. So now we can assign the material set to the pedal in the material panel of the pedals. You can see that some of my flowers are disappearing as I'm going into autumn and that's because I forgot to assign a fall material to the stem. So I have the same set ready for the stems. I have a summer texture and one fall, but right now I only have the summer one, so it's disappearing at some point. So all I need to do is just assign the proper material to the stem. And now when I'm sliding, they all stay there. This is a success. This is all very fine, but it's not exactly behaving like I would like to. So for to refine the effect, we can go into the season panel uh, right under the material section. So we are, here we have different options to really control the effect. So the first one is the start of set. This one dictates when the season chain is going to happen according to the parent curve. So for this one, I want the petals to age faster when they are on the bottom of the parent curve. So that way it will age from the bottom all the way to the top. So for that, I'm using a decreasing curve and adding a little bit of variant to make it more interesting. So you see when I'm sliding this, the bottom petals are 
changing colors faster than the middle ones. The next thing I want to change is the drop time. I think I'm losing too much pedals in the middle and not enough at the bottom. So for that, I'm just increasing the drop time to make sure I have still some pedals left at the end of the winter and then decreasing the beginning of the curve so that the ones that are at the bottom of the parent curve disappear sooner than the ones that are at the top. Then I'm changing a bit the droop value because I want some gravity happening to those pedals. But I don't want this effect to be happening in the summer. So I'll be using the blue curve to really constrain where the effect is taking place. So you see here by having an increasing curve, the effect is not happening in the spring and the summer, but, but mostly concentrated in the fall and the winter. And I'll, I'm changing again the droop time because I want some more petals left at the, the end of the cycle. And then we see the droop happening in the fall, which is super nice. And then, so they look like they're shriveling and getting dry and sad. I'm increasing the curl and the fold value. But it's the same as the droop. I don't want this effect to be happening in the beginning of the slider. So I'll use the blue curve to really make the effect happen at the end of the cycle. So using again the same one for the fold. Next I would like to add an effect for the early spring. So I want the flowers to look like they're blooming at the beginning of the cycle. So what I'm doing is taking the blue curve of the curl and then really bringing it down. So we have the opposite of curl happening in the spring section. So that way you see when I slide it they start, they're very close, then they open, and then they die. By using the curves, you could really create some super cool and interesting effects with your plants. You just have to see what it makes and have fun with it. I'm pretty happy with the petals, so I'm going to move on to the little filaments. Because I want them to have the same effect, so the flower age as a whole, not just the petals, but all the parts. So for this, I also made another version of the material. So I have one for spring, summer and one for winter. I mentioned earlier that I really don't like clipping, so I'm changing a bit the properties of the filaments to make sure they're not sticking out of the petals when it's blooming. So removing the enters and changing slightly the, the properties of that section. Now that this is looking nice, we can do the same with the leaves. So it's pretty much the same process as the petals. I created a material set that I'm assigning to the leaves. So for this one, I have three variation, one for the summer, one for the fall, and one that is completely brown for winter. And then just adding some curl and some fold, droop. Changing it slightly um, so it doesn't get too deformed. And that's how we can make a dying flower. <laughs> Knowledge acquired. We're finally ready to move on from these flowers and start something new. But don't worry, the next flowers, they're going to be pretty much the same steps. So it's, they're going to be a lot quicker to, to make. But for now, let's add some vines onto that vase. The first thing we want to do is add the vines themselves. So again, with the branch tube, making sure they're long enough so that they can wrap around the vase. Then we can increase that absolute number have more than one vines and then making sure they are pretty much near the end of the zone that is the parent and then what we want to do is add that vase as a mesh force to do so click on force add force 
geometry from mesh generator. Then you can name your force. There you go. Now we can assign the force to the branches, but when we do so, no, they disappear. And why is that? That's because we need to compute the vase before the branches. To, do, to fix that, what we need to do is select the branches and then change the pass in the generation panel. There you see the branches come back. So now we can control the force, increasing the value. And we don't want the force to have an impact on the branch at the beginning of the spine. So I'm using the parent curve to make sure only the top half of the branches are attracted by the vase. I want the, the vines to go down, down the side of the vase, so I'll, I'll be using gravity to kind of make them go into a certain direction, to go down. And I'm copying the curve from the force to the gravity. Whenever you want to save time, you can copy-paste quite easily curves, properties from one node to another. It's a great way to save time. And then I'm just adding some noise. When you're using mesh crawling, you cannot use um, the late noise. You have to use the early noise. So if you see your branches are all straight, that's because you don't have early noise activated. From there, you can play around with the length of the spine, the gravity, the noise. You can add forces like gnarl or twist. And all of that is are going to... All of that is going to change the pattern you see on your mesh crawling. Now I'm just adding a second level of vines to add more details in there. So it's the same process again, adding the uh, assigning the force to the vines and then playing with the noise, with the gravity, the length of the spine and making sure I don't have extra branches in the middle of the vase too. Be aware, you could have a lot of geometry hidden somewhere. You don't want that. <laughs> it's going to be very expensive. Not that this is really an optimized mesh, but still. Now that the vines are done, we can finally add a new flower. I'm a lazy artist, so I like to copy paste as much as I can. So I'm just copying the node that I already had for the previous flower and then using the gravity to have some that are going up, some that are going down. But now that I lo I'm looking back at this, I think th maybe this wasn't the most optimal way to work. I think a force with attenuation to, you know, shape the bend of the branches would have been better. So you do you, find a better way than me, and then <laughs> share it in the comments. Now I'm just adding the same tip to add my petals and changing the, ra the, the radius to modify the silhouette. Okay, so now we can add some petals. And if we look at the texture, you see it's the same, the same thing. So an illustration for the base color, the, the normal mat with a little edge. And I created a fall version that we're going to use for the season materials. And then using the same properties as we did with the first flowers, adding some curls, some fold to really give a nice shape to this flower. Don't hesitate to use the scale. So here, you see, I could have gone back into another program to change my texture, make it narrower, but I would have wasted time. So on a lot of occasion, what I like to do is just simply change the XYZ value directly into the speed tree modeler. And if there's not too much stretching happening, it's all good. Do, 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 just shaping those little pom-poms because they're so cute. So I'm changing the orientation of the petals and then changing the stems, avoiding clipping at all cost. Now I'm just adding some leaves onto the new flower. 
I could have copied the material and just tweaked the color to create a new variation. I think that would have been nice. So you don't have to create a new texture. You can just directly edit it into the material window if you want. At this point in the modeling, I started entering more frequently the node mode too to individually move some branches around. I like to keep that step for last because I think keeping it procedural as much as you can in the beginning really helps the process because you can always come back and make modification without breaking anything. So it's easier to work this way. But at the end, you can really make it your own by entering the node mode, the hand drawn mode with the bend tool too. I'll be using that in the end. Now I'm just adding some dead branches in there to add some diversity to the bouquet. So it's simple branches with a lot of noise and then some bifurcating twigs coming out of it. And we're ready to add the final part of this flower arrangement and those will be ferns. So again, I'm adding some tubes. This time I didn't copy paste the, the one I already had because they're going to be quite different from the previous one. Again, using the gravity to make it look like it's going out of the vase. But like I said, I really think a force with attenuation would have been better than to play with the curves, but ah, it worked for me in this case. For the generation mode of the leaves, I'm using Philotaxy and alternating. This way we get this, those nice opposite leaves. And for the texture, I'm still using the same one. So it's only one material to do all the leaves in this project. But I changed the cutout so it looks more flat at the bottom and rounded at the tip. So it's an easy way to reuse your texture. You can just change your cutout to fit whatever you're trying to do. And then I'm adding some variation to break the pattern. If you don't, it will look pretty robotic. I don't think... Well, in this case, we don't want it. You, you might. Depends on what you're doing. We are almost there. Just bear with me. The last little changes I make to these ferns. Then changing slightly the radius of the branches because I thought they were too thick. And now we're ready to adjust the season for the ferns. So for this one, I played a lot with the curves, but to decide where I wanted to keep the leaves and where I wanted to have empty areas. So there, this wasn't good because all the leaves were still at resting at the tip of the branches so it didn't look very good so I made sure I had some leaves that were still there in the winter at the beginning of the branch and then when I slide looks pretty good I'm happy with the season transition so now I can enter the final icing part of this modeling cake <laughs> and it's entering the hand-drawn mode. So we have this little bend tool that allows you to individually shape each branch so that way you can really refine the composition, make sure everything is placed exactly how you want it to. So for this one, I'm just bending some of the flowers to create a more dynamic composition by making, making some of them bendier, some straighter. And this is how we make a bouquet macabre. Yes, we're done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't hesitate to share your suggestion of what you would like to see next. We love to receive those. And we'll see you at the next tutorial.